Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Universal Robots live stream, where we are so lucky today as to have our application engineer, Arian, joining us here uh, live from, uh, from Denmark. We are broadcasting to the entire world. And um, the idea is here that you get the opportunity to ask a robotics expert uh, any question you might have regarding robotics and automation. We have already uh, gotten a few questions from the community prior to this. And um, so we are very excited to, to answer some of those. Um, if you uh, have any questions during this short Q&A, please let us know in the comment and we'll uh, pick them up and I'll ask them to, uh, to Arian as we, um, as we go. Um, I don't have anything else to, uh, to add. I just want to, um, to pass on the, the uh, mic to, to Arian and let him um, uh, take the first question that we got yesterday. So, uh, so Arian, uh, let's jump straight into it. I was asked yesterday, um, the UR3, Universal Robots 3 cobot, uh, can that be used for sanding? Hi guys, I hope you can hear me now. Um, yes, uh, of course, uh, the, all of our E-series robots are perfect for that kind of application. So for something like sanding, the issue is you're uh, pushing down while you're moving around. And uh, our E-series has forced torque sensors in the nose. Um, for the uh, UR3 specifically, the uh, wrist three or the end of the robot, the tool joint, you can rotate that infinitely. So the robot could actually sand itself with, uh, with rotation. So it could have sandpaper and turn that continuously while it moved. But uh, all of these E-series robots have a force sensor in the nose so they can push down with some specific force while moving around. That way you get a smooth sanding. Um, so all of our E-series could actually be used for something like that. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for, for, for this answer. We've got another question coming in here. So what's, what's the new trend within Cobots? So some of the applications we're seeing, seeing a lot of growth in is stuff like welding or uh, like sanding or polishing, where these are either process application, even gluing, where you have to move at a continuous speed going through uh, some uh, path. These are actions that humans aren't that great at doing at uh, continuous speed without slowing down or go, uh, moving faster or uh, doing stuff where you have to apply a specific force. So right for polishing, you want to be very smooth and push down with the same force across the entire surface so that you get an even polish and uh, there aren't any bumps. The same for sanding and welding as well, where you want to move in a continuous line at the same speed so the weld doesn't uh, have bumps in it. These are all moves, uh, things that we've improved our ability to do, especially with our uh, E-series robots, but also with the CB3s, where we're seeing a lot of growth in this area because it's becoming so easy to do. Um, yes. And the automation just, it's so much, it gets be even better than humans and you can teach it. Uh, to do something very specific where humans might have a shaky hand or an uneven push. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so interesting to seeing those new things uh, coming up. Um, we got an interesting uh, question right here in the, um, in the, in the chat from, from Germany. Um, do you think a UR uh, robot can be used in people's uh, daily lives some point in, in the future? Yes. yes, of course. Uh, the point of the cobots uh, are that they're a way for robots to be uh, safe to be around. So having these robots where you can work right next to them or live right next to them and you won't get harmed and they won't have to be stopped every time you go close. Uh, that's one of the very big advantages of these cobots. Also, they're so simple to program that you could use one at home. I know one of my colleagues is a recent dad, recently became a dad, and uh, he set up his robot so it can rock his uh, child uh, in, her, in her crib. So uh, these can definitely be used at home. Um, they're 
made to be safe to be around. So the robot has a bunch of safety settings built into it. So if the robot bumps you, it's going to stop and retract a bit. It's not going to hurt. It's going to be safe uh, to work near or even uh, walk into, right? Um, yes. yes. Cool. So, so, so uh, fascinating. Um, we're getting more questions here um, in the in the chat. Um, we got to have a guy here who wants to know: Can you can you explain the concept on of uh, of coding when you were talking a a a UR cobot? Yes, of course. So the one of our big primary goals with uh, our cobots is actually with the whole concept of cobots is that it's going to be easy to use, right? And that very much includes the programming. So for coding these robots, we have a list of actions it's going to do. And these are so simple that anyone can understand them. And then you have a list of actions you could add. And if you press somewhere and then press an action you want uh, to add, it's going to go into that tree on wherever you pressed, and then it's going to do perform that action. So you can do stuff like teaching it, moving it over here, then pressing set this waypoint. Waypoints are points in space we want to remember. And then you can set a waypoint over here. And if you press play right after doing that, it's just going to move between these two. Um, the same way you can uh, turn off or on lights uh, by setting power to uh, yes or to a true or false, or high or low. Uh, all these things are set up to be so simple that anyone can understand them and learn them. Uh, we do a lot of trainings here on our premises, uh, but we also have training partners around the world helping to teach people how to use these cobots. Um, yes, uh, we also have online uh, uh, resources you can access on our webpage. Yes. Cool. I think I'll uh, throw a link to the uh, to the online uh, training if someone wants to do that. I'll just uh, type that in the uh, in the chat. Um, we got another question here. Um, compared to normal industrial robots, how do you detect the collision with a human during uh, during work with a um, with a cobot? Of course. That's one of the things I also find really fascinating. So the way the way we do this is uh, each joint in the entire arm it has a motor in it and uh, and encoders telling it where it is. So the motor uh, moves it and the encoder tells it exactly where it is. And then uh, what we do is we predict how much power each motor is going to need to make it to do a specific movement, right? And then we plot that prediction, predicted graph of uh, power necessary. Then we offset that. So we put a, a upper and lower bound on how much power the joint can, the motor can actually take uh, before we think it's bumped into something. So the safer you want it, the closer that's going to be to the prediction. And the, le uh, the more uh, lenient you are, meaning the tougher it can bump you, right? Is it just going to touch you before stopping or is it going to bump into you and push you a little bit and then stop? Uh, that That's that uh, leniency we give it. And then when it's moving, if anything's in its way, it's going to want more power than uh, we want to give it. And we're going we're gonna to detect that. As soon as we do that, we retract a few millimeters just so we don't pin you to the wall or push uh, hold you there, right? Uh, we go back a little bit and then we stop. So that's how we do it. We uh, we keep constant track of how much power each joint is taking, and then if any of them are uh, are doing anything outside of the bounds we allow, then we stop the joint, move it back a little bit, and then uh, everything should be safe. Cool. Thank you. Um, we were also asked um, in the uh, in the chat on 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 Instagram previously about uh, specifically the, the programming part for for CNC uh, machining. Can you say anything that is uh, specific to um, to to that and how you can learn? Of course. So uh, I don't know if you've posted the resources yet, but what we have is an award-winning online e-learning platform. And there you can uh, you learn how to combine the robot with exterior machinery or uh, inputs. So the robot can take 
signals from other machines or from sensors or anything outside the robot as uh, electrical impulses, and it can work with those. So one of the things people often do is have the robot uh, connected to their CNC machine, and then the CNC machine tells it when it's done with a piece, then it's gonna uh, the robot's going to go in, take that piece, go back out, and then the robot tells the CNC machine when it's put in a new piece ready to be milled, right? So uh, there's a really good uh, tutorial on how to do stuff like that in our online e-learning e platform. Uh, it's going to be under our, at our homepage under Academy and then e-learning. It's free, uh, no credit card required. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> um, we have another question here. Now it may get uh, it may get tricky, tricky and pretty um, specific. We are asked: um, Can you tell about the implementation of a cobot on an AMR, an autonomous uh, mobile robot, um, for picking pellet, uh, picking and palletizing of cartons and packages? Of course. Uh, so one of the challenges when you have a robot on top of another robot, something like an arm on top of a moving uh, robot is you want, you need one or two things. You need to either be able to adapt the position uh, you're gonna move to with the arm uh, dynamically so that if the robot, the moving robot isn't in the exact same place, we can still adapt to that. Or you need some kind of a alignment pin, which is uh, also something where one of the things many of many of our cobots are on mobile stations, but which you move around with a cart, for example. There you can use a pin so that you know the robot is in the exact same place every time. So if it does the same movement, the same, it's going to hit the boxes in the exact same way, and you're going to be sure it's going to pick them up every time. For something like an autonomous robot or something where it moves autonomously, you can do something like that where you have a pin or a uh, and a corner it moves into so that it's perfectly aligned every time. Or you can have something like a vision system or a sensor which tells it exactly how to offset the movement. Um, but all uh, both things are very, uh, very possible and quite uh, easy to set up. Um, but of course, it's something extra you need to think about when, when you're implementing something like that. Thank, thank you, Arian. We are we are running out of uh, out of out of time here. Just just want to to thank you for for answering all these questions and 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 uh, in a special thanks to every one of you watching and and sending these uh, these questions uh, to us. It's been a uh, it's been a, a, a pleasure entertaining you with these uh, with these answers. I hope they are they are, are useful to you in the other end. If you want to. Um, if you have uh, more questions or if you have a comment to this uh, concept, we are kind of evaluating whether or not to do more of these. And please let us know in the in the comments. Was it good? Was it bad? Was it useful? Um, uh, let us know and uh, please su submit additional questions if you if you have any. We'll um, we'll try to to get back to um, to most of you. Do you have anything to add, Arian? No, I would just like to say thank you as well and thank you, Morden, for. Uh, setting this up and giving me this opportunity to answer any questions there were. Uh, it's always good to uh, reach back out to the community and make sure that uh, we understand what you guys need and you guys understand how the robots work. It's uh, very interesting. Thank you. Take care out there and we'll see you next time.